God bless you, Bishop Wooden here. I pray that you're having a great day today. I am in a, uh, a, a different place today. I'm, I'm so grateful uh, to the Lord. I've been thinking all morning long. I'm uh, just a few days away from celebrating my 30th pastoral anniversary here in the city of Raleigh, North Carolina. And I, when I look back and I see the things that the Lord has done, my friends, I am simply amazed. Um, when I was appointed to the upper room some 30 years ago, my goal was, to be honest with you, if I could just maintain at least half of uh, what my pastor, the late great James Henry Turner, uh, had achieved. If we could just uh, uh, maintain there on Lake Willow Road at the church there, then I feel I felt at that time that I would uh, have been a success not knowing that the God of the Bible through his grace and mercy had much more planned in plan uh, than that and in store and uh, as I look back uh, over my life to quote the song and I think things over I can truly say that I've been blessed and I have a testimony and one of my testimonies is this that God has given me, in my opinion, or should I say, let me describe it, in my never-to-be-humble opinion, the greatest congregation in all of the body of Christ. There is not a church in existence that I would even give a second thought to uh, uh, leaving upper room for. God has given me some of the finest people in the world to stand by me and to stand with me and my family uh, these 30 years and I praise God for the members of the upper room church of God in Christ who pray for me who support me who stand by me and you know supporting brother Wooden hadn't always been the easiest job because uh, we do we, we we march to the beat of a different drummer and our drummer is the scriptures we believe that God's word stands no matter what we believe that the Bible is right no matter what. And we believe that, that, that when it's all said and done, those of us who stand on the word of the Lord are going to hear the Lord say one day, well done. We live in a day now where churches who take such a position are many times maligned and that preacher is accused of being judgmental and accused of being mean. And, and whatever you do, don't make your stand and then let God bless you for your stand, then you're criticized for being blessed. And if you make a stand and you're not blessed, then people say, well, his religion and his God is not even working for him because look at it. So in some ways, in the mind of some, you can't win. And yet, there's this congregation. There's this group of people whom God have raised up for such a time as this, who stand and have stood by me. I think about the happy warriors who go down to the abortion clinic every Saturday and fight for the lives of the unborn. I think about our magnificent music department who Sunday in and Sunday out, the musicians, the singers, the praise team, the choir under the direction of Clarence Rocky Rayford sing the glorious praises of God. I think about our elders and ministers. What a quorum of men of God that we have who are doing a tremendous work and who preach the gospel. And yes, we have some of the finest preachers in the body of Christ right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. I'm Praise the Lord for my first assistant, Elder John Amanchuku, my second assistant, Elder Anthony Wilson, and these powerful, powerful preachers and teachers that we have here at the church, and, and our magnificent district missionary, Margaret Mose, and the powerful department of missionaries, and, and, and powerful missionaries, and the department of, of women in our church, and my lovely wife, First Lady Pamela Wooden, over the women's department and she's doing a tremendous job as a church worker and as my wife God gave me somebody special and I can go on and on talking about uh, this church I have the finest board of directors that anyone could ever have led by Deacon Joe Morgan he is a preacher's deacon hey pastors out there every one of you 
need a Deacon Joe Morgan. And uh, so I thank God for our board. I thank God for the Philippians, a group of people who have come together for the express purpose of praying for and supporting the pastors, to, to supporting me. To call them a pastor's aid committee is an understatement indeed. And they have stood by me down through the years. Our teleproduction department. The, uh, when I start talking about the church, when I start talking and calling names, when I, when I think about those who are feeding people here every week, food being passed out to those who are in need, I clap my hands, I praise the Lord for being so good. A thriving youth department. We're turning out Tomorrow's leaders and uh, to the, the future preachers and teachers and presidents and elected officials, business owners, people who are going to make and are making a mark in this world. I thank God for the volunteers, the multiple volunteers, the van drivers, the traffic directors, just over the years. The members here have been good to me. God has added to our church quality people. The founder, the late great James Henry Turner, he's in heaven. But his wife, she's here and a member of our church. And we love Mother Turner. And we love Emil. And we love Ithiel. And we love uh, Teresa. And, and those members of the family. All of them, but those members who are right here in the trenches fighting the good fight, a fight of faith helping us to get the job done. There are so many other people. There are so many unsung heroes. There are so many names that I could, could call and that I should call. Uh, that time will not allow me to, to call those names now, but I just felt like doing kind of a tribute to the membership here. My, my 30 years uh, of being here have been long and they've been short. Uh, but the things that we've accomplished, make no mistake about it, I've made those accomplishments. We've been able to because first and foremost, the Lord God of the Bible has been faithful and he's been kind and he's been merciful. And secondly, God has given me a powerful, powerful congregation who has stood by me through the thick and the thin and are yet standing by. So on this 30th uh, anniversary coming up on the September uh, th th this weekend, I want to say to the members of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, uh, to you, I I'm so thankful. I'm so appreciative. I'm appreciative to the membership. I'm appreciative to my wife. I'm appreciative to my family. I'm appreciative to Crystal and to Patrick. My children now are grown. And my, 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 my daughter is married and we have grandchildren. I got three. Can you believe that? <laughs> when I came, my kids were babies and now I'm a granddad. God is so good. Have, have a fine son-in-law and, uh, 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 and who happens to be my first assistant, Elder John Amanchukwu, and he's doing a fantastic job. So I want to invite you to be with us tonight to hear the word of the Lord. And uh, I am, I'm just thankful. I'm somewhat uh, reflective today. I'm, uh, I'm appreciative. And uh, in the 30 years, I, I had no idea that God would allow me to become a district superintendent, would allow me to become a first administrative assistant, would allow me, your, your brother in the Lord, to become an auxiliary bishop. And now I sit before you and I speak to you today from my desk here at the upper room. You know this junky desk. You know it by now. Uh, as the prelate of... Uh, North Carolina third jurisdiction to say that I'm humble to say that I'm honored to say that I'm appreciative um, uh, is an understatement words fail me today to adequately relay how I feel but as I as I end this I want to say to all of the well wishes and my friends in this in this city who are many I have many who Tell me all the time, Bishop Wooden, I'm praying for, for you. Bishop, I'm standing by you. We receive all, uh, it, through every sphere uh, or outlet of, of media, people are writing and, 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 and they've been uh, uh, encouraging me 
down through the years, I want to say to you, thank you for your support and for your prayers and, and uh, for your love that you have shown me and mine. Now, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm asking God for another 30 years. <laughs> give, asking God to give us power to keep on keeping on and to anoint us. And you know what, my friends? I want to stay hungry for the Lord. Don't you? Yes, God has been good. Yes, the Lord has revealed himself. Yes, he has blessed us. But let me tell you, the moment you get full, the moment you get satisfied, the moment you think you've arrived, the moment you think that you're it, that's the moment you begin to die. I am hungry for what God has in the future. I'm excited about what lie ahead. America is changing. Times are, are changing. We're coming nearer to the coming of Christ. I believe that God's going to equip us and use us. Use me. Use you. To fight the good fight of faith. And to stave off the hand of the devil. Until Christ comes. To take us home, either through the rapture or through death. I hear the words of our Lord as he spoke to the church at Smyrna, saying, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. You know, he said that many of them are going to throw you into prison. Back in those days, here's what was understood. Prison, being cast into prison, wasn't punitive. But those who were cast into prison, the, the being thrown into prison was a prelude to being tried and convicted. Because most of the time when you were thrown into prison, the trial was a sham and you were convicted and you would be sentenced to death and you would be uh, executed. And every one of them understood it, but they stayed faithful to the Lord. Well, I am going to stay faithful to my God. Come on out and worship with us tonight. Let's study the word of the Lord together. God bless you. Thank you.